Hi, I'm Daniel Rogge with Tormach. This summer we had the pleasure of going to Chicago twice for two different trade shows, uh, Automate in May and IMTS uh, just this past September. We brought the ZA6 robot and the 1500 to both of those shows. And uh, in the next four videos, we're gonna show you a little bit of a behind the scenes of how we chose the part we chose for IMTS, how we programmed it, um, how we did some probing, uh, how we designed the end of arm tooling for the robot. We'll talk a little bit about the LiDAR system that the robot uses to find the work pieces. And the hope here is just lowering the bar, lowering the barriers to entry for people who are interested in automating machine tools. So for IMTS, we wanted a part that kind of drew people into the booth a little bit more with sounds of chips hitting the windows and some heavy roughing. We really wanted to do something that we wouldn't have to throw out at the end of the show or put in the recycle bin. And uh, so we chose a part we actually use in production. So this is the motor mount for the motor that goes into the MicroArc 6, uh, uh, the fourth axis product used in the 1500. So if you buy a MicroArc in the next year or so and you open it up, you might see IMTS 2024 engraved. Uh, we gave a lot of these out to, to customers that stopped by the booth at IMTS, but the rest of them are being used in production. Uh, it's a high tolerance part. Um, it's a large, physically large part, which as we'll see later, you don't have a ton of room inside a milling machine's enclosure to be flipping stuff over, especially when you have two in the gripper at one time. You usually have like the raw work piece and uh, a finished work piece or the op one work piece and the op two work piece in the two jaws simultaneously. So it's big, uh, it's a challenging part to do, and we thought we'd just uh, walk people through how we made it. So I've slowed the robot down a little bit so I can talk over this while it's doing it, but you can see it's found a workpiece and it's gonna be bringing it in. And when you see the robot inside the enclosure here with a workpiece in one of the jaws and about to grab the other jaw, you can understand it's a lot lot of area taken up by the end of arm tooling here. You can see it's very helpful to have the mill help out with the tending. So you see the mill moving into position here as the robot is grabbing that. And you'll see that happen at a number of times here. What we're doing now is we're picking up the op one work piece. We're dropping off a blank work piece. Now we're going to come over, pick up the op two work piece. Notice the robot doesn't have to move. The mill's doing that for us. And now we're gonna to have to get the mill out of the way so that we can swing this giant tool here around and drop it back off in the mill's vise. And so that's the robot issuing a bunch of MDI commands to the mill. And that really helps. The ability for the robot to tell the mill to move makes it a lot easier to swap these work pieces out. Now this happens about twice as fast when we have the robot running full speed. I've only slowed it down so I could talk over it. First we do some roughing, through spindle cooling at work. That's 250 inches a minute, full depth of cut, pretty healthy step over. While the mill is doing its thing, the robot is gonna scan the work piece scan the table to find more work pieces. And this is a LiDAR sensor, like you'd find on a Roomba. And it's scanning these work pieces, scanning the table to see what we've put on the table. These aren't arranged in a grid, they could be anywhere. And the idea here is to make it as easy as possible for people, you don't have to worry about laying out a grid with different spacing for every workpiece size. Now in this case you can see it's scanning a pretty big area. We programmed it that way because we wanted to be able to stack a whole bunch of workpieces on the table. I've only got eight workpieces on the table here but we could do a stack of up to three high and I could do any number of stacks that I wanted here. Each workpiece takes about 10 minutes to make so the robot has plenty of time now it's going to come for a closer look at some of these. So it, like that stack, it's going to take a look at that stack. It scans it again. Now it's thinking about it for a little bit. 
and it's going to come grab it. And now that it's grabbed it, it's going to sit and wait for the mill to finish its thing. So what challenges did we face when getting this IMTS demo ready for the show at McCormick Place? Um, one thing that wasn't very challenging was the robot programming. The program we wrote for this thing is the same one we used for this one, even though they're two very different sized work pieces. If you think about it, it's the same program. The first thing we do is we pick the op1 workpiece from the vise. We drop our blank, our raw workpiece into that op1 vise. Then we go over, pick up the finished workpiece from the op2 vise, and we flip over the op1 workpiece and drop it off on the op2 vise. We did that for automate. We did it for IMTS. Even though the work pieces are totally different, the program was the same. Um, challenges that we did face, um, chip management is always tough. At Automate, we didn't use through spindle coolant. We only brought a, a mist coolant system. Um, through spindle coolant tends to throw chips everywhere. So we had to be pretty diligent about washing things off. You noticed we washed off the probe before we used it. Uh, actually, the chip fan that you see at the end of this program has through spindle coolant going through it to completely clean off the work pieces before we blow them dry with the chip fan. So chip management, always an issue that you have to pay attention to. Um, we ran into a couple of robot mill communication issues. I won't, I won't call them issues. Quirks that we had to work around that we'll be working on for future programs and we'll roll out to our customers soon. One of those is the robot sitting here waiting for the mill to be ready, right? Well, if I stop the program right now, the robot might think, oh, the mill's not doing anything, it's ready. And we had that happen a couple of times. And so what we've started doing now is we've introduced a subroutine at the top of the mill that basically tells the robot, hey, I'm doing some stuff right now. And unless I get to the end of my program successfully, I want you to know not to bug me. When we get to the end of the mill program, we set another subroutine that just says, hey robot, everything went okay. Another challenge we face is just related to the physical size of the work pieces. This guy's kind of small, doesn't weigh all that much. This guy's physically larger and weighs a little bit more. So the, the grippers that we use, you notice this is a much larger gripper than the gripper we took to automate. And that's just because this workpiece weighs quite a bit more. This guy's pretty easy to pick up. It wasn't so easy to flip. And so, you know, you realize if you only grab it from this edge and you try to flip it over, it starts to fall. And so for this workpiece, when we were flipping it, we had fingers that extended all the way out to the second hole. With this one, flipping it from op one to op two poses a similar challenge. This is what it looks like when op one is completed and we need to make a gripper that engaged this hole and that edge so that when we flipped it it doesn't it doesn't rotate right um, we ended up 3d printing that we plan to to later on go and machine it after we prototyped it with the 3d printer but the 3d printed version ended up working great and we'll cover that in another video Thank you so much for watching this overview. Uh, coming up next will be a video talking about how we programmed the probing routines in the mill, specifically how we used those routines to set G54 and G55 offsets for the mill and for the robot's flipping gripper. The robot actually uses that G54 offset when it picks this thing up, so it always grabs it perfectly in the, the registration hole here. Uh, then we'll talk a little bit about the LiDAR system that we used with the robot. We'll have a video just on the LiDAR system. And then uh, lastly, we'll do that video on uh, the 3D printing, the end of arm tooling. And you can see here, everything on the end of arm tooling, whether it's these guys, this, in fact, just the tooling plate itself, or the flipping fingers, all 3D printed. Thanks so much for watching.